Welcome, everyone. This is the 9th of June, 2023. This is Asia Documentation Office Hours. Topics today, Google Summer of Code. Uh, some corrections in 2.401.1 change log. Jeffrey Chen's pull request, and then some some topics that have been there before. And we, if we get to them, great. If not, um, already already that those few things are good things. Anything else that needs to be added? Looks good to me. Okay. All right, then let's go ahead with. First topic, Google Summer of Code. So the Docker Quick Start project, Chris, anything to report there or any any update? Um I think like that project might be a might need a bit of chasing and pushing because like um it should be a point where this where we discuss like at least the first draft PR, but I don't see anything yet. All right. Great. Okay. And then on building Jenkins.io with alternate tools, you indicated there may be some styling changes. So is there a, is, should we look at something? I haven't yet captured. Oh, because I uh, do you still have the link from uh, from from Vendit? Because like he shared a link on the Gitter. Oh, good. To, let's uh, let me see if I can grab it and let's okay. let's see if we can open up a sample. Let's see. So if we look in the Gitter chat channel. Okay, and here we are, Jenkins Docs and building with alternate tools. Okay, here we go. And oh, yes, okay, got it. So it's this document. It's a Google Doc. Right, so a described in a google doc and let's because, open it right here yeah because we, we, we need to discuss like how to pass a protest with uh, your ux uh, team because we do have some proposed changes mm -hmm. yeah and i'm waiting for Vendy to um to produce a git hub pages version of the entire docs first before we present it to uh, the ux team ah okay all right Preparing a GitHub pages layout from Antora for yeah. discussion and review, right? But um, but with that already, I think this this gives us something here to discuss. Oh, um, I look at that and I think that looks great. That would be a preview of the site with the old content. So it's like okay. he's, he's, he's almost done with the, with the actual like implementation. So it's like for the toy dogs. So um, as soon as it gets up, we can have a review by everyone on the UX team. And we can, we can set up a preview link via subdomain. So docs.jenkins.io and uh, push it there for all to see. Great. Yep. Um, so and eventually so uh, final des or the destination we're looking for is docs.jenkins.io right yep I think so uh, I have to talk to there, should I talk to Gavin Morgan or should I talk to Info about this so both i think i think gavin did the gavin mogan did the initial did the first implementation of preview sites for jenkins.io so he certainly knows what he did but i think the infra team uh did did the did final implementation or did additional change it did changes as needed or as requested by Gavin. 
So okay. I think they understand how to do it and either one should work. Okay. So if we look at that, that preview site, if, well, let's actually, let's just open one of the existing pull requests. Here's the pull request from Jeffrey Chan that was on our topic list anyway. And if we, if we jump to the bottom of this page here, there will be a link to show environments view deployment. And there it is. And, and this is, you see, this is a site on Netlify and they yeah. apparently are willing to host them for free uh, wow. as part of this kind of, as an open source project. And so that it just happens naturally. Okay. So on the UI UX changes, this felt like a really good one. And I remember that there were other changes Okay, the table of contents that usually occurs on the right hand side of our pages, like let's grab this one, right? So here we go. This table of contents, the the this proposed update looks perfectly fine to me. I I have no complaints about that kind of a change. Okay. And then code blocks changes. Okay, here with this sort of gray background and the, the the soft blue background looks very, very nice as well. I mean, I assume that these are things that naturally came out of Antora and therefore have yeah. been through Antora's development process to decide, hey, how will this work best, et cetera. Okay, yeah. And and I certainly like the the change of of admonition blocks, I've seen a number of sites that are using this layout that shows the new layout with color, colored leader and a, a, a word that hints whether it's a tip or a note. Yeah, I think it's called a badge. A badge. Okay, thanks. Um, I'd like to go back to the code samples. Sure. Um, I'm having a few eye problems right now. And I cannot read the code. Oh, yeah, the contrast is not strong. Enough. Yeah, the contrast is really, and I'm just looking at it on my laptop screen, granted. Okay. Well, it, so it looks like it looks, it's a good question. We ought to, we ought to ask to see if there's a way to, is there a way to adapt that for, for people who visually may not have, have, you know, for the, for, being readable for people who have low contrast or don't don't who need high contrast is probably a setting that Antora has available. Right. So you guys you guys can read the letters just perfectly fine there. I can see it, but I'm trusting that because this is a, a screenshot, my my not being able to zoom in enough. My problem is visibility at at distance, not uh, not contrast. Uh huh. So well, this say, one, I think I need new glasses right now, but I don't think I'm. So this is the current the current one he he captured, and here's the uh, yeah. So I I think I see what you're saying, Meg, is that the blue background makes it a little harder to read the the text. Although in the screenshot he's got, that's that feels worse than the one that I'm accustomed to. Are you okay if I open up the document yeah. page itself? Let's yeah. look at actual examples. Because I don't think down below I saw the light blue with like a black with black lettering on it, or even you know, and that I could that I could see mm -hmm. outside of that section, but I don't know where that. Goes. Well, so here's here is a here are the existing code samples. That I can read easily enough. Okay, and and that in what he's showing. Oh, oh I see. Because we have to change the font color. Yeah. Oh, well, or the yeah, changing. the font color or the or the attributes of the font that make the maybe property. making it yeah more making it darker or or higher Why? contrast. Yeah. But. But when I look at the example he took of the screenshot, I think it it doesn't capture what at least what I see, because it's for me, what he shows as current 
is lower contrast than what I see as, as on any page that I open. Right, yeah. I agree. So I'm I'm not, I'm not overly worried then about about the the lack of contrast there because I think it may just be an artifact of his of his screenshot or his choices. Yeah, it's a question. And if the UX people are going to review it, they deal with this stuff all the time. Right. Well, and and Christina Pizzigali is very interested right now in accessibility. Uh -huh. So it's a good thing for us to to be sure that. In part of the UX SIG, we can invite Christina to say, hey, give us some feedback on on the readability of this. Once we've got a site, once there's a you know a, a prototype site, either as a GitHub pages or somewhere else. Right. Yeah. See, I'm I, I agree with you though that it's it's a struggle to read in this example that he's gotten a screenshot even though i don't struggle to read it here right yeah and i i don't think i've done anything to my configuration to somehow force high contrast text or anything like that yeah. okay nice nice review option though this is great please be sure to to thank um Thank Vandit for the providing the comparisons. Okay. Yeah. Now this one, this last one was blank. Oh, oh, it's blank. Okay, so uh, I should not be worried that it's in fact blank. Great. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, that's not my bad eyes failing to see something. That's no, really good. Um. Also, a question about the table of contents on the right: Is that going to be anchored like the one in the left is? So when I scroll right down the page, am I still going to have access to that? I'm oh, good, greedy, greedy. good question. I don't know. I don't think that was mentioned. Chris, do you know if Vandit has made any mention of whether or not this, the the table of contents that's today uh, floating or a, a, that scrolls with the page today, mm -hmm. if it would remain visible like the the index entries or like the index on the left currently remains mm -hmm. visible? And there may be a problem because it goes into the text there, doesn't it? So if it was moving down, is it going to shorten the lines in the section that it's next to? Right. Okay. That, at least that's that's been one of my my I, the table of contents for me staying at the top has been just fine because of the of its incursion on the text that it's next to. Right. Okay. Well, I lived with the stuff on the left too, but it sure was nice when they anchored it. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah. So then you get greedy, but if you know it's up there, you can go back up. Okay. Yeah. Let me check check again with him because like I haven't tested his site yet because I may, I will do that over the next few days. But I was waiting for him to do more work first before I do that because yeah. I, I don't want to see broken images. Yeah. It's a very nice start. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, it has a great look. Look. Um, and with some minor questions, let's put minor questions. Um, is there a way for, let's see, how would we say accessibility? See, to I don't, think, I don't know contrast. if I see this because I don't think I'm blind. I, I'm not in the thinking of that's maybe deluding myself, but. I'm I'm not thinking that my vision is so bad that I should be having to set accessibility options to read it. It's just, you know, my eyes are not as sharp as they were when I was 20, I suppose. But <laughs> so let's put it this way, light blue background on on code examples makes make them more difficult to read. Is that a good Maybe. way to Maybe, or it may be that the text is not, I mean, it looks to me like the current stuff, not in his screenshot, which you're looking at, that the gray is about the same darkness as the blue, but the text is darker. Right. So yeah. maybe it just needs to be a different font or. Has higher contrast in Mark's view than in the screenshot. Yeah. Good. Okay. Great. All right. And then the other question was 
and I'm I we just discussed it, and now it's slipped my mind. It was the table of contents for the oh, subsections. Right. Uh, we love love the sticky navigation on the left. Will the table of contents on the right? stick as well yes or should it i suppose is uh, or, yeah should it does it on other antora sites right mm -hmm. because one of the the benefits here is that we get we get to gain from all the experience that other antora sites have used right good all right Anything else? Mm, no, but I think a preview is going to be ready soon. Ah, okay, great. So it's like it would be how we start and get hub pages though. Sounds great. Okay. Okay. Next topic, then. There are errors in the 2.401.1 changelog that were discovered during Darren Pope and I's uh, live stream. Oops. <laughs> that must have been fun. Well, <laughs> you, I make mistakes. That's okay. Ad lib. Ad right. lib. Exa well, it wasn't even ad lib. It was clearly, oh, <laughs> you're right, Darren. That's wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay, we just smile and say, oops, that's wrong. So it, it's an easy one to fix. Now, Chris, you had a good question in that you asked, what if what if there are no changes in between 2.401 and 2.402 or yeah. 2.401.1 and 2.401.2? And the answer is we will still go proceed with the release. Okay. Um still proceed with a release because the release clock it's the same condition for us weekly if there were no changes from one week to the next with jenkins weekly the release clock ticks and we do a release okay all right anything else on the 2.401.1 change log nope okay uh chris for you kevin martin's returns next monday Okay. So um, if Kevin, if Kevin isn't available for the change log, then I'll help with it. Okay, sure. Great. All right. Now, Meg, I saw that you had made some review comments on the, the yeah. pull request from Jeffrey Chen. I didn't you want to give us an overview of what you what you had said and seen? Um, yeah, I uh, I've been picking at the pro. I mean, there's a lot of things that like need a topic sentence. It looks, you know, how people write. So is that? But then I'm also looking. Okay, so and then I went back and saw your comments. So the I'm not sh like this document. I'm not sure it actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right that maybe we should compare it. And at my quick glance, this stuff mostly seems closer to what's in managing Jenkins than what's in ad administrating, administering Jenkins. Ah, okay. Although, well, so are although, you okay if I open managing Jenkins and let's take a look at it? Absolutely. Okay. So, so here, if we go to managing Jenkins, this has topics in it like configuring the system and managing tools and managing plugins and time zone no agents and nodes that kind of thing right. so what were some of the themes that you read about in this or i guess we could just well we've we've got some stuff and it, do we nowhere tell them what the contents are of jenkins under bar home we that not in the docs anymore I don't think that is, and that might be a good thing to put in a managing in a, section. Right. And how to change it. Right. Let's let's do a quick search just to see if somebody's we've got description of Jenkins home. Okay, so we've got backing up and restoring right. Jenkins. 
And this talks, well, so, so maybe this is our description of the content. And if we need a better description, it's probably a, a good place to put it here because it talks about configuration files, the job subdirectory, things that don't need right. to be backed up. Um, okay, and stay right there. Let me find the line number. Okay. Um, at um, yeah, starting line forty six of his PR. Okay, let's let's back jump. up and restore, which actually doesn't seem as good as what's there. So, okay, good, and that's that's one of the risks, right? Is that right. there are sections brought from the wiki where we say look i'm sorry that the material we've already got in the pages is better than what mm -hmm. what the wiki is bringing so we should just strike it from the from the content in that yeah. was proposed from the wiki basically he says just copy everything from jenkins home down and call it a backup oh right right exactly and and, and the backing up and restoring page gives some careful thought to here's some things you shouldn't back up like these and even if i remember i give some comments on why you should not save certain security sensitive files onto the same medium oh, as your yes i hopefully yeah so okay good so so that feels like a good thing for us to be sure we capture that it's okay for us to say hey this should be deleted from this Let's take this for just a minute. So this is, you've given your comments and I'm confident that Jeffrey will take a, will take those. He's been applying changes pretty regularly when Bruno made some suggestions. Let's take a look at this page in its preview form, if that's okay. Let's yeah. take a look. Where have I got it here? Preview, oh, I need the preview site, don't I? So let's open the preview site. And you may have to guide me, Meg, on where the page is inside. It's is it? I don't remember. It's a brand new page that he added under managing. It's under system administration, and it's administering dash Jenkins dot adoc. Okay, so administer. Oh, it's this one is the one he added. Good. Okay. Okay. There we go. So now, for me, this this page, the Jenkins home directory thing is something that i don't i i haven't seen it on the on the site itself and there may be more things we need to add here and certainly there are words there that we want to fix i've hit some of those yeah i've got oh good it. okay and i did and it needs to i don't like the way it just says jenkins needs some disk space so i may i turned it into a topic sentence and said jenkins home is the top of the directory that contains file or something like that but you know, right topic sentences um okay and then this one this one i agree that is that is just discard right sorry right. But we've we've got an entire section about backup and restore that guides them on that <clears throat> but as i look at the jenkins home thing i think this may justify placing it somewhere i don't i don't really want a separate page called administering jenkins but I, I would like for us to find a place for this. How about Jenkins Home Directory as a page on its own? Well, see, see, I was just thinking, isn't there one that already naturally has some other things we're describing? Is it, well, okay, configuring the system, <laughs> which is completely okay. empty. What if we put it there? That's possible. Or let's see, are there? other examples system information no that one's not really it okay um another one do we ever aware discuss the structure of config.xml i have forgotten this doc we lot. do we do not as far as i recall so let's let's go back here if we were to propose the change that this thing if this thing went into went into the managing Jenkins configuring the system and then we we say that that would be the place we would put a description of what the XML files are that configure the system right that's right because that's what I was looking like config.xml I'd like to link to mm -hmm. a page that says that this will 
Right. Yeah. We real. It always bugged me that we didn't have reference pages for stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it's described under backup and restore. But if I just want to know what the structure is, I don't expect to have to go to backup and restore. Right. Um, how about moving and copying? Renamed See, files? I would I would strike this entirely because a, there is now an operation in Jenkins that does that does a rename. Right. Right. So we've got my Jenkins controller has has renamed just like everybody else's does. So I can I can open it up and I can say I want to rename this thing. And it's just a natural operation from the UI. Maybe we we should describe that, but I don't think I don't think we should suggest to them that they would ever use file system commands to to move copy and rename. I would that's not my policy to say. Yeah. And people I mean people do like the shell, but yeah but there's a lot of stuff that they can only do from the ui right so exactly well okay so so i don't even recognize this command oh, okay have you, have you ever seen a i i don't know is there a linux command for rename no it's there Ooh. is oh my oh sakes my you learn something new every day and uh -huh. it's got it's got a wild card uh, and of course, it's not POSIX at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, even better, Meg. You'll love who who is the author of the com of the command. Oh my! Oh my! Isn't that amazing? The author of Perl, the original author of Perl, wrote oh. this command, and I am pretty sure that it is not a POSIX command. Just a minute. Let's get into my non-Linux machine. Oh no, it has it. Oh no, it has only the C library. Yeah. So so the the command that they're offering here is Linux specific, won't run on Mac OS, won't run on FreeBSD, won't run on OpenBSD, and won't run on Microsoft Windows. So I yeah. I think this one should go because because it's also file system. Yeah, file well, system. and he's got he's got you copying a subdirectory of stuff over you know it just right it probably it probably would work and if you know enough to be playing around with something like that and figure it out you might be able to pull it off yeah, but, well and and if we want to describe that hey jobs are represented as files on the disk that's that's not unreasonable I'm just not sure. Actually, I'm confident I don't want to encourage users to use file system commands to manipulate Jenkins jobs. Right. And now archive unused jobs, I think that's kind of within what we've got for backup. Don't Does that have something in there? If you want to like, you're not backing it up, you want to throw it off to something so you can delete it, but have have it someplace where you could retrieve it if you needed it. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. I I'm a little surprised that we don't have a plugin that does archive of jobs. No, we don't. Yeah. So I don't have an answer on that one. I've it's a it's a valid question. It How... might be something that one if I were going to do anything with it, I would put it within the backup. Right. Oh, oh exactly. Maybe this belongs in the backup page saying, hey, oh, oh, there it is. There is one. The Shelf Project plugin. Ah. Got it. Okay. And and it's even maintained by Pierre Bates. So oh, okay. so it's got an active maintainer. 2000 installations is not bad. Uh, what's its hang on just a minute. Let's check for its health score. So if we look for Shelv, health score is 93 out of 100. So it's not bad. That's not bad. And the things, <laughs> the, oh, it is not up for adoption. So what, what are the detractions from its score? Okay, repository config. <clears throat> oh, okay. It's not doing automated release and it doesn't have contributing guidelines. Not bad. 
So the okay. score, a score of 93 out of 100 is not bad at all. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then, then I would think we ought to leave that in terms of move that into where was it now? Where'd it go? Come on. Come on, Mark. Find what are we it. doing with this? This should move. Do we want that in the minutes? Do we want this in comments to the. I think I think let's capture it in the minutes for now. Okay, good. And then and th for speed, and then I can put it in as comments into the poll request later. Okay, cool. So and I, I will think finish going through and nitpicking at the pros for anything that survives. Excellent. All right. So let me and let me capture the move. So so the archive the rem specific tasks tasks include remove the mention of or replace the rename instructions with um, UI screenshots and instructions. So this is something that, that Jeffrey could do is look, rename really exists. It needs to be that. Then move the archiving a job into the backup and restore right above that put to remove the backup and restore section oh right yes remove the remove the backup and restore section we've already got already have a better page good okay um we want to um conserve the information about Jenkins home. Oh yes. Both how how to move it and what the contents are. And we're going to put that into the currently content free configuring main uh, managing slash configuring Jenkins. Yeah. So configuring the system under manage Jenkins. And we're also going to move what we've got. Let's oh no we don't have anything about config.xml do we? Uh, well, yeah. no, but consider adding some text to describe XML configuration files. Right. And also because actually that probably needs some work too, because, um, oh, my Jenkins knowledge is getting very rusty, but config.xml, if you're doing config with code, has a different role than if you're not, right? Well, that's a that's a good point. Pointers two, and we've we've got a section on configuration as code already. I think it's the next one up, actually. After the right, thing. where was it? Let's go there. So they're managing. Managing. We've got configuration as code. Second page, right after configuring the system. system right. And and for me, this that's a good choice for the second one. Ev as in the first page we talk a little bit about jenkins as home jenkins home and their next thing to read is oh here's how you configure this code and i just saw oh, oh what did you see for something there was another alternative to configuration and where 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 um Da, 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 da. Oh, I'll tell you later. I'll find it. Okay. I, I, it's, I was going around and something was mentioned about config.xml unless you were using configuration as code or something else. That, oh, Groovy and Knit Hooks. There it is right now, right there. Oh, the Groovy Hook scripts. This one? Oh, okay. That's, um, yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm almost prone to say this one. Well, it's still listed as work in progress. But it's got some reasonable content. Yeah, do you remember? Like I said, I would go through the one by one and remove the tags, the the work in progress tag. Sorry, could you say that again, Chris? So, so the, uh, I think like um, I I I'm um, like for for this summer, I will start going through the documentation, the user guide, and I will remove the work in progress tag for some of the doc, like the doc pages. And I think if they are, I think it's perfectly reasonable for pages like this one to say, look, this is no longer a work in progress. It's got a reasonable description of 
groovy hook scripts and they're copied from so it's perfectly reasonable to say not a work in progress any longer okay but now if you were using these does that impact what your config.xml contents are it, it certainly it? does and does and, it say, does and page say that and it well i think i think it will tell you that here it's going to run some additional things right after jenkins startup and because it can access classes in Jenkins and all the plugins, it absolutely is making configuration changes. And will it write those to config.xml? It does, yes. In J it, it, that's usually the goal of these changes is to so, write them into a permanent config file. What if somebody, because people, what if somebody subsequently goes in and manually edits config.xml when they're using these hooks? So the last last writer wins. Okay. But it's still it would if things would still work. You wouldn't just blow up the system. Well, uh, well, if you if you make a damaging edit, it will things will blow up the next time it restarts. Right, but if if you made something that would be a reasonable edit, if you weren't using the init the groovy init hooks, um, it would work fine. Correct. I remember there was a time with JCAS there was an issue or something where if you did something in the file or I forget if you if you did something on the screen and but we're using JCAS that JCAS was going to overwrite it the next time you start and and that is still the case and I think that's actually described here saying that hey if you if you are <clears throat> excuse me if you are using configuration as code next time Jenkins starts it will apply your configuration as code changes or if you do reload existing configuration and you'll see hey it you don't have to restart because anytime you reload it's going to make the change right I was thinking god when I was still there that um they had fixed the UI so if something had been set by JCASC it was read only and it wouldn't let there's you there's an option to do that there actually ah. is an option to do that and and you can you can configure configuration as code or the permissions to say oh we're not going to allow any changes in the admin UI because we know you've got configuration as code enabled. Okay, okay. All right. Were there other action items yeah. that we had? Other specific tasks? So back to the original material Let me go back to the beginning okay Let's see it we got was... Jenkins home directory this um minute. okay just a minute so I need to reopen that environment okay so here we are and it was in system admin in the administering Jenkins page okay Jenkins home we talked about backup and restore is a delete oh oh right did we mention in here remove this the pages Okay, remove the um, references to, oh, no, it is, it's there. It's this one. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, go back to where we have the listing and go back to the play out of it. The listing of what's in Jenkins. Okay, this one? Uh -huh. Oh, um, right. The word. Do you want the the commentary to be in parentheses like this, or do you want it to be as a code? as a code comment you know i'm i'm okay with either i find i find this as readable as anything else others comments what 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 have you found works well for readability i don't know i find some some geeks complain if it's you know they say if i copied this out but what are you going to copy this to I actually find it a little more readable than having the slide star or whatever, but oh, oh, I see. Right. Well, I didn't and, know what the standard was. Or well, a good point. So let's let's look at a competing standard that I find less readable. Actually, okay. So mm -hmm. here is here is an attempt to do annotated code in the current site, right? And this is using a facility that's built into ASCII doc. So this yeah. this this circle this number one circle number two, to, yeah. and and okay that gives us lots of room to make the description, but for me this is harder to read it than than the layout that has been used here. Right now, if if these were sentences, this would become impossible to read. Right, 
but given that it's not actually sentences it's just barely minimal text yeah Yeah. what do you think meg are you are, would you prefer I'm, because this could easily be switched and say hey let's make it look like the others with or chris have you seen any mention from from um from vandit on this kind of annotated example i think it showed us a, like a preview on video but not editing so i think he has done it already but i'm not sure how he did it Okay, and, and so Antora still has a concept of this kind of thing. Not sure. Okay, all right. Me. Let's see. So, well, and we could we could we could actually do the research here to see. Good, good point though. So the idea for me, Meg, this is good enough for first first attempt. Yeah. And if we choose to change it later, we can certainly do that. And you might, when Kevin gets back, you might ask him what he thinks. Oh yeah, it's sort it's... of his job to worry about this. This is one of those things. I've been through so many religious battles, and mm -hmm. it's one of the. I don't. I'm. I'll do anything. Just stop screaming at each other. I don't care. Right. Right. Exactly. Um. But so I see it as the sort of thing that I know can set off battles. So it's like, let's mm -hmm. notice it go by and say. Right. So well, and let's let's put a, a a, a note to ourselves in it we accept that except that the inline uh, descriptions of each item in the listing are okay uh, may change in the change it in the future but okay for now yeah good okay very okay. good what is coming that I haven't gotten to? I'm pretty well doing it. Let's so see. Batch up. renaming jobs. Okay. Right. That we, one's gone. We said. Archive unused jobs we took care of. Right. Oh, oh no, I am beyond that. Okay. And then. Oh, and then we've got. Oh, what I haven't gotten to yet. Ah, using. Chap underscores chapter dot yaml. Under doc book using. Under yeah, we using. have some Jenkins best practices. Oh, oh, so there's another file. Okay. All, All right. right. So, yeah. Oh, oh, good. Okay. So so I haven't been there yet. I haven't right. either. Okay. Well, so let's talk to this one. First topic. Um, this one, we've already got it. Okay. This one we've got it. This one we've already got. So those two for me are just deletions. Mm -hmm. Always secure Jenkins. We we talk about that already very, very soundly and stuff that Daniel Beck and others have reviewed from the security team. Although, but you know what we don't have though people, God, people want the best practices stuff. They don't, what I'd, I'd rather have the best practices not have unique information but say something, be sure to secure the system C oh. in a link. In other words, because I this is some place where I rather than reading through all this stuff that's on the left of the screen, mm -hmm. looking for best practices, a place that like stands up, but don't give me the details. You know, we have okay. I don't like best practices to have unique information, but I tell me secure the system, go here to see what we mean. And that's and that's a fair point. We could this could be delete this text entirely because we've already got securing Jenkins. Uh huh. And we've got warnings. We've got pages that tell them building on the controller is a really bad thing. It's not even on larger systems. It's a bad thing in general. Right. Right. Yeah. Don't build on the controller. That's totally perform that's, backups. This is again linked to the backups page. Uh-huh. Uh, I like I like that one. Yes, that's good. Okay. This one I'm 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 not a big user of fingerprinting. So for me, that's I got that when I was I got the feeling that fingerprinting was a big thing for the um artifacts at one point and then it sort of went away. Well, yeah, and, and I'm sure there are use cases for it. In mine, it my case, 
semantic versioning has been been good enough and release early release often but yeah okay i mean maybe maybe it should be manage dependencies and you can do it through fingerprinting i'm sure there's there's i'm sure there's a section on fingerprinting somewhere yes yes there certainly is so you know but but that's you know it's always use fingerprinting you know say no you're managing your dependencies and you could do it this way or this way or this way yeah see i'm i'm prone to say on these a number of these things that were previously listed as as best best practices are yeah. probably no longer even best practices right so right. interesting yeah so this this page needs more view and i apologize i've sort of run out of time oh it is that time but thank you very very much the recording will be available for for review and i'll actually i think link to the recording so that jeffrey can can review what we've said and see some see see those comments right but okay. a very very nice start to this right well yeah. and thank you meg and thank you chris for taking the time to to review it today and any other topics say, before we close no nope i'm good center right. of seven okay. is still on its path to death right i'm sorry what is still on its path to death Cent os seven oh it, it is yes the yeah. end of life notifications have been delivered here i show you the show you the blog post the blog post is posted and we haven't had any people actually one bug has been fixed we must i mistakenly had an off by one error in the year for end oh. of life for fedora 38 it's like instead of 2024 when actual fedora 38 end of life is it was 2023 and so the users were mistakenly seeing it oh, being I told it end of life right for fedora yeah. 38 they've got another 12 months yeah. and and so the a bug report was submitted by a fedora 38 user and we fixed it in the last weekly release so that that is resolved fabulous yeah so cool. fedora 36 is already unsupported ubuntu linux 18 is already unsupported and alma linux 314 is unsupported so thus far there hasn't been any outcry about hey how dare you tell me my operating system has reached end of life right so they should be knowing that from other things too. So like I'm I'm still running an 1804 Ubuntu sitting here. <gasps> That's terrible. What an awful thing to say. Well, it's it's because the computer's 12 years old and it's I mean, I have to reboot it every two oh. days or it goes dead. <laughs> I have a brand new one sitting on my son room where it's been for three months with a stick in it, running Windows, waiting for me to reboot it, install a current Ubuntu on it, and I never get to it. So so, so so you should you should act on your shame and go get that thing installed i i will <laughs> in the copious free time exactly all right thanks everyone okay. thank you thanks very everyone. much talk to you next week thanks.